He was the jokester of the family. Like he, if someone was in a bad mood, he was the one you needed to be around because he was always making a lot of things and trying to make someone laugh or, you know, just love on them or be goofy, try to rap some crazy rap to them just to make them laugh or he loved God. He, I had him in church since all my kids since they were little and he could tell them, quote them Bible verses like no other and he would, we'd go to church every Sunday and Wednesday and he just, he was loved by everybody. He was everybody's favorite. Things started to change when he started junior high and the kids he started hanging around. He was still very active in football in the seventh grade, but when it was about the middle of seventh grade, he just started hanging around these kids and, I mean, he started smoking weed and... You know, hiding it behind my back, you know, trying to tell me that I'm crazy, and which I found out. And then I moved to Alney, Texas, and I moved him with me and took him out of that school. And we had been there since March of last year till September when he overdosed. We came in for the weekend to see my grandma, and he begged me, you know, to go see his, stay the night with his friend, his brother, he called him. Um, and I was like, I finally gave in. It was on a Saturday night. I finally gave in, and uh, I went to church the next morning. My 15-year-old went to work at Sonic, and about right before the preaching started in church, I got a call from my 15 year old and I messaged him and I was like, I'm in church. I'll call you back. And he said, you got to answer the phone, mom, something's wrong with Kaysen. And so I got up out of my, out of the pew and went out, you know, in the foyer and I called my son back and he was like, look at your message. I just sent you a picture. And the friends he was stayed the night with had posted him on Snapchat of him laying dead in the floor and saying, my friend just passed from a perk. And that's how I found out that Kaysen had died. They said that he had passed early Sunday morning and the 911 wasn't, wasn't called until 11.42 a.m. on Sunday. So right when they were snapping those shots of him laying on the ground, putting them on Snapchat, is right when they were calling the, the police or whatever. I went straight to, we left church. I got my grandma and said, come on, something's wrong with Kaysen. And I just, I prayed the whole way over to his friend's apartment. When we got there, the cops were already there, the detectives. And I'm, I'm going up and I'm like, where's Kaysen? Where's Kaysen? And they come like and bombard me. It's like, he's gone. He's gone. And I'm like, where? They, they said, he's laying on the living room floor. Okay. <laughs> I guess just doing their job. Just telling me to calm down, <laughs> to sit down, come talk to them. I didn't want to talk to them. I just wanted to go hold him. I just wanted to hold him. All I kept thinking about was him lying in there on that floor all alone. And for how long? And he was cold. And he was he hungry? Like, and that's all I just kept thinking about. Like, <laughs> Was he crying out for me? You know, was he, did he ask for help? Did he tell him to call her, his mom? Did he? <sighs> I talk to the detective like three or four times a week. Like if I don't call him, he's calling me. Like, and he's been, he's been really good. Like, this one's been really good. He's he's the one that took the case, and he's been really good. Like, he's he checks on me and my other son, and he makes sure we're okay. Like, if he's like, nothing today, you know, I'll let you know. He said it's just very tricky when it's fitting all like this, and especially with him being so young, they have to make sure every T is crossed and every I is dotted. 
There can't be any kind of discrepancies in it. Like, he's got to make sure everything's done right. People should, I don't know, I think the biggest thing is be a parent. Stop being a friend. Educate your children. Take their phones. Check their phones. Go through their phones. Their phones is a privilege. And you should have the right, You if you don't have the lock code, you better get it. Or reset it, you know what I mean? And make them give it to you. Go through their phones. Check their social media. Be aware of what friends are hanging around. Be aware of the parents that of their friends. Be a parent. Be a parent. Don't take nothing from anybody. Unless you see the pharmacist, put it in that bottle, turn that lid, and staple that bag. Don't take anything from anybody. 